Tide independent scaffolding typically provides access to a building facade and is perhaps the most commonly used type of scaffolding. An independent scaffold consists of two rows of vertical tubular members called standards erected parallel to the building. These standards are joined with horizontal longitudinal members called ledgers, connected with right angle couplers to form the horizontal levels of the scaffold or lifts. The ledgers are in turn connected by transverse horizontal members called transoms fixed above the ledgers with putlog couplers. These transoms support the working platforms which are usually formed from scaffold boards. Scaffolding lifts are enclosed with edge protection to prevent operatives and materials falling from the platforms. The edge protection comprises guardrails usually formed from scaffold tubes and tow boards which are usually scaffold boards set on edge between the decking and standards at boarded lifts. The edge protection may be supplemented by other means depending on the nature of the works. Brick guards may be attached to the guardrails to contain bricks and other large objects within the scaffold, and sheeting or debris netting may be attached to the ledges and guardrails to enclose the full lift height to protect the environment from the effects of the works. In this video, we will look at an independent tube and fitting type scaffolding, widely used worldwide, and explain the common terminology. Prior to erecting a scaffold, the scaffolders should check the ground conditions are adequate. The method of erection with this scaffold is to place the sole boards down on the ground, followed by base plates. The first standard is held upright by one scaffolder, while another attaches a ledger and transom, using right angle couplers. When secured, this upright will be temporarily freestanding. This process is repeated at all four corners of the structure and are fixed together to form a complete square. Other standards can now be installed to the central areas of the structure. This completed section is known as the foot tie or kicker lift. Intermediate transoms are installed to provide central support for the scaffold boards, which the scaffolders will stand on to install the next lift. Transom spacing must not exceed 1.2 meters. The next phase in the sequence is the installation of ledgers for the first lift, and these are secured using right angle couplers across the whole row of standards on both sides of the structure. The structure is now braced along the plane of the ledger to add rigidity to the uprights. This is achieved by first securing a swivel coupler to the bottom of one upright and another to the area just beneath the ledger on the next upright along. The brace is secured at the bottom and the opposite upright is levelled. The first ledger can now also be levelled. This process is now repeated on the opposite ledger and the standards are now level and rigid along the plane of both ledgers. A face brace is required at a ratio of 1 in every 6 bays of scaffolding. Transoms are now installed on top of the ledgers using putlog couplers, otherwise known as singles or clips, and the process now begins to level the uprights along the transom plane using ledger bracing. This is achieved in the same method used for the ledgers and one swivel coupler is secured to the standard just above the foot lift and another to the opposite standard just beneath the ledger. The brace is secured into the bottom swivel and the standard is leveled off and the top swivel is secured. The transom is secured at this point with a putlog coupler and the opposite standard is leveled off. Intermediate transoms are now installed for support of the scaffold boards. A single guardrail, known as a scaffolder's guardrail, is now installed at a height of 1 meter above the kicker lift using right angle couplers, and this will allow them to safely install the guardrail for the first lift using a scaffolder's step. The first lift can now be fully boarded from the safety of the kicker lift. Once all boarding has been installed, a ladder should be installed at an angle of 75 degrees as a safe means of access and should be secured to the structure prior to use. It will be necessary for the ladder to be footed whilst it's being secured. The short length boards used to create the ladder opening should be secured to prevent displacement. The first activity when accessing the new lift should be the installation of the ladder hatch followed by the installation of the lower section of the guardrail and all four sides of tow boards, working progressively away from the ladder opening. All materials required for the completion of the first lift and erection of the second lift can now be raised and secured safely on the first lift.
Any hemping or topping out can now be carried out from within the safe confines of a completed lift. The processes described previously are repeated in the same sequence until the desired scaffold height is achieved. As the height of the scaffold increases, it's important to be aware of the need to move materials in a safe manner, and this may include bags for fittings and rope for other lengthier components. Another critical consideration as the scaffold height increases is the need for ties or other stability measures and these should be implemented at the very earliest opportunity during the erection process to ensure scaffold stability and scaffolder safety. Ties will usually comprise of scaffold tubes fastened beneath the ledgers across both sets of standards which are fastened to drilled anchors secured into the masonry or brickwork. Another method is to attach to steelwork with girder clamps. If anchors and steelwork cannot be used, the scaffold may be tied by other means and stability rakers are commonly used. These are a very simple concept that effectively increases the minimum base dimension of the structure, thereby increasing the maximum allowable safe height. It should be noted that if rakers are the primary means of ensuring stability, the height of the scaffold cannot exceed 6 metres. Once complete, the scaffold can be inspected, tagged and handed over. Method of dismantling All scaffolds must be inspected by a trained scaffolder or inspector prior to dismantling to ensure no additional safety measures are required prior to commencing work. As with erection, those involved in the process should be provided with a method statement, risk assessment and rescue plan. It is important that full protection is given the highest possible consideration during this process, and the scaffolder's step method should be used wherever possible. The scaffold should be dismantled in a sequential reverse order of the erection process, so this means it should start with the removal of tow boards working progressively towards the ladder access point. When tow boards have been removed from the top lift, scaffolders should make their way to the lift below, from where they can remove the boards from above. Using the scaffolder's step, they can then remove the top lift guardrail. All materials removed must be passed down in a controlled manner, and they should never be thrown or dropped. Once they arrive at the kicker lift, best practice is to remove each standard individually, leaving each remaining standard on two fittings to ensure the ongoing stability of the remaining components. Scaffold must be erected, dismantled and altered by trained scaffolders only. Scaffolds should be erected under a safe system of work to protect scaffolders from falls, ideally NASC Guidance SG4. Tube and fitting scaffolds should be erected to worldwide best practice NASC Guidance TG20. Access and egress on scaffolding should be in line with NASC Guidance SG25. Scaffolding must be inspected by trained personnel only. Modular system scaffolds must be erected in line with their manufacturer's instructions. Lightweight mobile access towers should be erected to PASMA guidelines. Please refer to NASC and Scissors guidelines for current best practices in scaffolding. Simeon offer all types of scaffold courses and scaffold health and safety consultancy. Please visit our website at www.simeon-risk.com or email us at hello at simeon-risk.com. Alternatively, call us on 0345 602 2418 if in the UK, or on 00971 439 5067 if in the United Arab Emirates.